Cable derating ensures all factors which can increase the temperature experienced by the installation is properly accounted for when selecting cables to prevent damage to the cable insulation and reduce system losses. Derating factors are applied to reduce the cable's current carrying capacity. But what can happen if you don't apply the appropriate derating factors for every installation method along the entire cable run? Let's find out. We've come to site to investigate reports of an intermittent burning smell coming from around the area of the generator. The installation we are interested in is the cabling between the generator and its associated step-up transformer. We've undertaken a non-intrusive visual inspection of the apparatus and the cabling which is exposed, but we can't see any problems. There is, however, a smell coming from underneath the generator circuit breaker. The cable connection between the circuit breaker and the 11 kV side of the transformer comprises 18 single core 240 mm squared 11 kV cables. Within the transformer bay, the six trefoil cable arrangements are grouped together on two cable ladders. So looking along the entire length of the cable installation, we can easily see the cables that are exposed by the transformer bay. The cables then enter underneath the transformer into the void below the transformer. They're then fed through the wall into an enclosed trench where they're contained on cable ladders before finally entering individual ducts which are embedded in the concrete and exit underneath the switch gear. The time has come now for a more thorough check of the cable runs. So generation is shut down and the electrical system is completely isolated and earthed. We remove the covers in the transformer bay first and inspect the cables, but there's no sign of any damage to the cables in this area. So we remove the concrete covers on the trench that contains the two ladder racks. It becomes quite obvious that we can see cable damage at this point. The outer sheets of the cables are started to melt especially around where the clamping arrangement is. There's two ladder racks within this trench. And the cables on the top rack show the largest amount of damage. This would make sense as the heat rises and is trapped within the concrete cable trench. It's not possible to inspect the condition of the cables within the six separate ducts embedded in the concrete. But based on our findings within the cable trench, we would assume that the lack of cooling in the ducting would cause even more damage to the cables. So in summary, where the cables are exposed to the free air movement, the cables are not showing any sign of any damage, but within the concrete trench and within the cable ducts themselves, the cables have started to melt. Out of the six separate ducts that are embedded in the concrete, it was only possible to remove the cables out of one of them the others were so badly melted that it actually bonded to the ducting itself. Our findings were reported back to the design company who decided to make the following changes. They increased the cable cross-sectional area for each core from 240 to 300 mm squared. They also requested a new cable containment ladder route be installed above the ground instead of going through the original ducts. The cables would then exit the end of the concrete channel which would be left open to allow for additional air movement. We were extremely fortunate that we managed to find a company that had 900 metres of 300mm cable available on stock which we asked to wind onto nine 100 metre length drums. Two companies were employed to terminate the HV cables, one team at each end and then we undertook the testing. Within a week, the system was re-energised and back up and running. We hope you found this video of interest. It's the first time we've seen such a problem in the 40 years we've been doing this. Please subscribe to this channel as it gives us some encouragement to make more videos. And thanks for watching.